Hey everyone, Nick Raboy here from Couchbase. We're going to see how to export our data from MongoDB and import it into Couchbase using the Go programming language. So this is a common question I get at conferences and events is, well, how do I get my information out of MongoDB, which is a document database, um, and get it into Couchbase? So this is kind of going to go over that. I, I do have some blog posts out on the topic, um, but you know what? I thought it'd be worthy to show step-by-step -step how to do this in a video. Um, so there are some prerequisites. Uh, I do have MongoDB installed and running. As you can see, I have Compass installed, which is their UI tool. I also have Couchbase installed. So you'll need, you'll need all of this available to you because this is going to be a process more than anything. But you know what? It's not a complicated process, and it's not a long process. Um, so let, let's try to jump into things. So in Compass, I am connected to my database. I have one database called Sample. I have one collection called People. It's very small, um, but you know what? This is just an example, and you can get the general idea on where we're going. So I go to People. Uh, as you can see in People, I do have some documents. Uh, they are not flat. I didn't want them to be simple, so these are objects. Uh, so these are documents, and they have a address inside of them, which is an object. Um, so that way, they're just a little more complex. They're definitely not anywhere near as complex as they could be, um, but they're not flat either. Um, so if you're using Compass like me, uh, go ahead and go to Collection, and go ahead to Export Collection. You want to say Export Full Collection. You'll want it to be in JSON format, and you'll want to choose where to save it. I'm going to save it at the desktop, and I'm going to call it People. It doesn't really matter what you call it. Um, I'm just calling it People.json. Um, because that is uh, the name of my collection. I'm going to say export um, and what I can do is I can actually um, say open up a new tab here. I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to say adam.people.json uh, so we can see what we're working with here. Um, so what we're working with and let me expand this. Um, let's see if I can zoom in here. So this is what we're working with. It's JSON data. Um, this is what it exported. Um, so I have three records, so three different lines with three different JSON documents. Um, so this is a line delimited file is what I guess you can call it. Um, something to note though, so Mongo stores all of its IDs as object IDs. Couchbase doesn't do that. Um, and in reality, it doesn't really matter because it's still valid JSON. Um, but we're gonna, as we go through things, we're gonna make it more Couchbase friendly. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna manipulate our IDs just a little bit uh, to make them more logical to what Couchbase interprets. Um, but again, it's not it's not truly necessary, but it will be helpful. So now that we have an idea of what our data looks like, uh, we can actually start developing a Go application. Um, so have your terminal open. I do have Go installed. Um, I'm in my Go path. What we want to do is we want to create a new project. Let's go ahead and call it CB Importer. Doesn't really matter what you call it. We're going to navigate into this CB importer, and we're going to create a file. Let's call it main.go. doesn't really matter what you call it either. Um, so I just have a single file. Now what I want to do is I want to open up that main.go file. And as soon as it opens here, we do have it open. Uh, it is empty. Uh, what we want to do is we want to get kind of the essentials here. So we're going to say package.main. Uh, we're going to say function main. Um, and we're going to save it for now. Now, uh, we won't immediately get Couchbase up and running inside of this application. What I want to do is I want to show um, what it looks like to first load the file, and then we'll work towards manipulating, and then finally, at the very end, we'll insert it into Couchbase. Now, to be successful, we don't want to just read each line of that file and import it as we go. We want to do things in parallel, and for that reason, uh, we're actually going to be using Go routines in this. Um, and that's going to allow us to uh, first load our file, and then each Go routine is going to take a separate line and, and do its thing. Um, so that way it'll be as fast as possible. Uh, but before we do that, uh, let's first of all, let's go ahead and, and add a simple uh, print line here. And we're going to say starting the application. So that way we can kind of get an idea on what's happening as we go through things. And as you probably noticed here, it is automatically importing for me. This is Adam. I do have some extensions installed, and it's allowing me to do that. So the next step is, well, we probably want to open up that particular file. Um, so let's go ahead and say, um, we're going to say file. Uh, we're not going to catch the error. You probably should uh, long term. But we're going to say uh, OS 
open and we're going to say uh, the path to our input file. Um, so what I can do is actually to make this a little easier is I'm going to copy that file. So I'm just going to say copy. And I'm going to say people.json. I'm going to add it to my go path. So my project uh, go path source github.com and reboy. And I'm already at the wrong path here. No, I'm not. Hold on. So let's just go ahead and say um, copy desktop people and let's add it to this project. And it's now there. So people.json, um, which is exactly what we wanted. All right. So now what we can do is we can say uh, people.json. We're going to keep it very simple for this example. Uh, it is in our path already. Um, so we're fine there. But after we've opened the file, uh, at the very end, uh, when we're done with everything, we want to actually close the file. So we're going to defer closing the file until the application has stopped. All right. Now that we have that, we've opened it. We're not actually reading it yet. What we want to do is we want to scan this file. We want to read each line. So we can create a new scanner. We're going to say scanner equals, and we're going to say buffer. So buff IO new scanner file, which is what we've opened. And we want to say scanner dot split. And we want to say buff IO dot scan lines. So that'll allow us to read each line of the file uh, one by one. Um, and when we call the scan function, uh, that's how we're getting it. So we can call scan.txt after that. And we're going to see that in just a moment. Um, but before we do that, uh, let's figure out where we want to store our data. So our data needs to be accessible by our future Go routines. Um, so it's best that we probably create a variable outside of our main function to get that done. Um, so we're going to say var data. This is going to be a channel. So because we're working with Go routines, it's got to be uh, thread friendly here. And we're going to be, it's going to be a channel of strings. So once we have that channel of strings, we can actually say data equals make channel of strings. And we can say, um, let's go ahead and do a loop. So we're going to say scanner dot scan data. Let's add it to the, to the data channel scanner dot text. So what we're doing here is we're saying loop until the, the file is end of file. And for every line in that file, uh, we're going to get it and we're going to add it to our data channel. At the end, uh, what we can do is we can say close data. So we're going to close the channel uh, when we're done with it. Now, at the end here, we can say fmt.println. We can say uh, application completed. All right, so far so good. Let's just reiterate here. Uh, we're opening the file. We are configuring our scanner um, so that way uh, we can read uh, each line of that file. We're creating our channel of data. So this is where each line of that file is going to exist and our go routines are going to read from the data. We're going to read each line of that file and store each line in the data. We're going to close the channel when we're done with it and we're going to print that we're done. Now, uh, that doesn't do a whole lot. Uh, what we want to do now is we want to create our go routines. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and create our go routines now. And let's actually do that above the scanner. So we're going to say for i equals zero. i is less than. And let's just determine how many workers we want. Let's go ahead and say we want 10 uh, go routine workers. Now, don't, don't make it too high of a number because you don't, you don't know what kind of power you're working with as far as your machine. Um, and you don't want uh, excessive amounts of inputs to Couchbase. I mean, Couchbase can handle quite a beating. Um, but if I were to add like a billion, I don't, that might be too much. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't stress tested. I'm not, I'm not a, a benchmarker. Um, but let's just stick with 10. That should be more than enough for a very large file. And we can say I++. Now, what we can do is we can say go worker and actually it's not go worker. We don't have a work. We don't have a worker function yet, um, but we would, we would spin up a go routine with the go function. So let's just call it worker 
uh, and we'll leave it at that for now. Let's go ahead and create a, a worker function here. Uh, let's go ahead and say uh, function, we'll call it worker, and we'll leave it blank for now. So each, each go routine would call this worker, um, and this we would have 10 of these workers running, and I misspelled it. All right, so that's cool and all, but if we were to do this, if we were to create these workers, if we were to read into the data channel, um, our application would just end because this is synchronous for now. Uh, we, we have no knowledge on when these worker routines are going to finish. Um, so as far as the application is concerned, it's just going to exit before it finishes. So what we need to do is we need to wait for all of our Go workers to end. Um, and there's actually a sync wait group uh, package that we can use. Um, so what we can do is, is external to our main function, we can say var. Let's call it wait group. And this is going to be sync dot wait group. And what we can do is inside of our main function now, inside of our main function, uh, when we start creating our workers, what we can do is we can do something like this. We can say wait group dot add one. So we're adding one item to, to wait on. Um, so for each go worker, we're, we're adding one. So there should be 10 wait items. What we also want to do is we want to say, let's, you know what, before we print out here, after we close our, our channel here, we, we're going to say wait group dot wait. So what we're saying is we're going to wait until all of these have finished. And we can define how they've finished inside of our worker function. Uh, so we can actually defer. So we're going to say defer wait group dot done. So when the worker function ends, it's going to call done and subtract from the list of waiting items. And when they're all empty, then we can finally exit our application. Uh, not, not so bad so far. All right. So the next step is, well, we're inside of our go routine. We, we've already started reading uh, into this data channel. Now we need to start doing our processing inside of the worker. Um, so let's go back up. On, starting on line 13 after the defer, uh, what we want to do is we want to say for, and we want to say document. So we're going to each each line represents a document. We can call it whatever we want, and we're going to check to see whether it's okay. Uh, we're going to read from that channel, um, and then we're going to say if if it's not okay, uh, maybe maybe the channel is empty uh, or some other reason, uh, we're going to break out of the loop. If it is okay, uh, let's just go ahead and, and maybe print out this document. Let's go ahead and say fmt.println and let's just say print out document. No semicolon. So I'll save it. Uh, this should be good so far. Um, what we can do is maybe let's go ahead and try to run it and see if we get lucky, see if I've made any mistakes. Uh, so I'm going to say go run and as you can see, I'll expand this a little bit. See if we can we can zoom in. I'm I'm refamiliarizing myself with uh, with Ubuntu, so I'm a little little behind when it comes to all of the shortcuts. I've been a Mac user for a long time, but I've just zoomed in. Uh, you can see that it read uh, from that from that file, um, not necessarily in the same order because you know what uh, each each Go routine works on its own, and that's all right. Um, but uh, for this case, because we, we don't have any database interaction, it, it completes immediately. Uh, I think it's in the same order, and that's fine. It doesn't really matter. We have three printed out exactly as it should. So the next step here is, well, you know what? Let me go back to the terminal here. The next step is, uh, well, you know what? Maybe we want to do some manipulations against this data. Uh, we, we probably want to uh, get rid of this object ID. Uh, we might want to add a document type, uh, things like that. So let's go ahead and create another function. So we have our, our go routine function, our worker function. Let's go ahead and create another function. We'll call the CB import. Uh, it's what it's going to take is it's going to take a, a document, which is a string, which is what we printed out. Um, it's also going to take a, uh, we could in this case, a, a collection. Uh, we don't have to, we're, we're hard coding stuff for now. We're only working with one, uh, one, one collection, but if we wanted to, we could pass it in. We're we're, we're setting ourselves up for further success down the road. Uh, so we have this. Uh, what we're saying now is we're saying uh, we can create a a map 
which is going to represent our document and then any manipulation we do is going to be against this map so map we're going to call it map document this is going to be of type uh, map the key is going to be a string the value is going to be an interface we're going to say json.unmarshal we're going to say we're going to take the document which is a string uh, we're going to convert it into bytes so a slice of bytes uh, and then we're going to load it into our map document so something that is a little more friendly to work with than a string we're going to say map document we're going to give it a type again uh, we can call it whatever we want uh, we don't even have to have a type but it is it is easier to work with because if i were to look at this this people collection inside of couchbase as is i wouldn't be able to tell what it is there would be no reference to what what type of document it is so we want some kind of organization uh, we're going to call it uh, whatever collection is uh, in our case we'll just call it people in the end uh, so we're giving we're giving it that um, and we're gonna we're gonna leave it as that for now um, so we've added a type so a, a very a very tiny uh, manipulation here uh, the next step is well uh, we need to work with the ID which is probably the most complicated uh, part of this whole ordeal um, so let's go ahead and create another function so that way it's a little more organized this function is going to have recursion in it um, and what I'm actually going to call it is I'm going to say compress um, so you could say uh, unload compress whatever you want to call it it's the concept of taking that object and just returning a string in the end um, so we're going to say compress uh, we're going to be providing it a map document and we're going to be saying uh, it's going to be of type map string going to be interface and as a return it's going to return a string because that's our goal here we want IDs in their string format um, so let's go ahead and create a variable this is going to be our object ID variable uh, so we're going to say just call it OID maybe this is going to be a string and we're going to loop because we need to loop through every property in our document because we don't know if the ID is going to be top level, if it's going to be nested, we have no idea where these IDs are going to appear, but we want every single ID uh, to be turned into a string, no longer object IDs. So we're going to say this, uh, for uh, key and value, so we're going to loop through each. We're going to say range map document, and we're going to have a switch statement. So there's uh, three different types of categories that we can run into when looping through. Um, so we can run into the scenario where it's a string, we could run into the scenario where it's an interface or an object, and we can run into the scenario where it's an array. Um, I don't think that there's any other options other than that, but we're gonna say switch, we're gonna say value, we're gonna cast it uh, for type, we're gonna, we wanna know what, uh, what type of document it is, and we're gonna say for the first scenario, so this is gonna be where the case is, it's a string, we're gonna say if, key and we're going to say if that key equals oid and we're also going to say uh, where the length of map document equals one we want it we want it to be a string and we want it to be equal to oid um, and we don't want it to be some uh, we don't want oid to be like another nested object or anything so if that's the case uh, we're going to say return value and we're going to cast it as a string uh, because it's an ID and we only want the ID. Now, let's go with the other scenario now. Uh, let's go in the scenario where uh, this is going to be a map. So we found, uh, and by map I mean this is an object, so this is a string interface. Now, if this is the scenario, this is where the recursion comes in. We're going to say um, OID equals compress. And this is going to be value dot map string interface. Um, and it's just going to call that. So it's going to try to compress whatever the next level of our document is. So the value. And it can continue to do that on and on and on. We're going to say if OID not equal to empty string we're going to say map document key equals oid 
Um, so we're, we're continuing to manipulate. Now, the last one here, the last uh, case that we can run into. So we're going to say case. And we're going to say interface. So this is this is a, a slice of interface. So this is if if the if the current property is an array, uh, we're gonna we're gonna do something with it. We're gonna actually gonna loop through each element of the array, basically calling the recursion that we saw on line 39. So we're gonna say for index element range value, and we don't know we don't know what we're working with, um, but I mean. It could be uh, another array, it could be something else, but for this, so we're ranging through uh, the value which we're casting as, a, as an array here. And we're going to say OID equals compress element, and then basically what we saw above, so map, string, interface, and then we're saying, uh, and we can actually copy and paste this. Oops. So let's go ahead and paste this in. So if OID equals empty string, um, we do have to change it a little bit. Oops, let me let me erase this line. So value interface index equals OID. So we had to change it up a bit because we're not we're not necessarily working with just a straight map this time around. Uh, we're working with an array. So we need to we need to update the, the ID value at the particular index uh, instead. So this is again the, the most complicated part of of this particular example, our manipulations. We do need a return statement uh, because just in case it doesn't hit any of this, we're going to return an empty string. Um, and Let's go ahead and go back into our CB import, and we're actually going to make through make use of this. Uh, so we're going to say compress, and we're going to pass it in a map document. It'll run through the entire document, which in our case is is kind of simplistic, and it'll do the manipulations. Now what we can do is uh, we we can uh, let's go ahead and print this out again, see if we if we did it right before we actually start adding it to Couchbase. And what we can do is actually, um, we actually got to call it in our worker because we're not actually calling it yet. Uh, instead of printing it out inside of our worker, what we're going to do is CB import. We're going to pass it a document and we're going to name it people as our collection. Now we can actually, we're going to marshal it back into um, a string here. And so that way we can print it out. Or, you know, we could actually, let's see if this will work. Let's see where this leaves us. We can do further manipulations next. Uh, undefined documents. Let's see what, what line it's referring to. Line 27. Oh, I did plural here. Uh, let's go ahead and save that. Let's go ahead and try to run it again. All right, so it did something. Um, it definitely did something here. Um, it's not it's not very pretty. Let's go ahead and, and we'll, we'll convert it to JSON first. Um, so what we can do after the compress is we can say uh, JSON Marshall. Actually, JSON document equals JSON dot Marshall. Uh, let's say map document. This we're not going to catch the error here. Uh, let's go ahead and say string chase on document. See what we end up with here. All right. So this time around, it we we marshal it into JSON again. Uh, notice that I mean, it, if you look up in my terminal, I have ID equals OID. If you look at our example here, now it's just ID equals that ID. So it's 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 been configured. It's 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 appropriate now. It even includes type. Um, so this this is what we want to insert into Couchbase. We we want um, it to be kind of 
flattened or compressed or whatever you want to call it um, because it's more couch base friendly. And again, it doesn't have to be, um, but we, we want it to be. All right, now that we have everything manipulated and, and good to go, uh, we, we want to set up Couchbase now. Couchbase has not been a part of our uh, example as of yet, but it will be now. So let's go ahead and create a variable. Uh, we're going to create it external to any function here. Uh, we're going to call it bucket. We're going to uh, say go CB bucket. Now, if you haven't already installed Couchbase, uh, the SDK for Go, uh, you would say go get and you would say github.com, couchbase, go cb. There's also a different version that's uh, not, this is the edge build. Uh, if you want the production stable build, uh, there's a different URL. All right, so we have, we have it included here. Um, so now what we want to do is we want to say, um, let's connect to our cluster. So let's go to the main function. Um, doesn't really matter. Let's go ahead and say that the top will, that'll be the first thing that we do. Uh, we can actually say cluster. We won't catch any errors. Again, you should catch your errors. Um, but this is just an example, not, not trying to educate you on, on proper go code here. It's just, uh, just the export and import kind of thing. So connect couch base URL. Um, I actually have it open. Uh, we want, we want this URL. Let's copy that, go back into our editor, paste it in. Make, if, it, if it copied the HTTP, I know Chrome does that. Just go ahead and remove it. That's thrown me off before. You'd hate to be debugging for an hour just to find out that there was an HTTP in there by accident. Uh, but we have cluster. Uh, what we can actually do is we can say bucket equals cluster.openbucket. Uh, we're going to say, let's pass in the bucket name. Um, I'm going to, what we want to do is we probably want to create a new bucket first. I have two buckets here. I mean, we could load them into these buckets, uh, but let's just create another one just for the sake of creating it. Sample. I'm only going to give it 128 megabytes. Leave everything else as is. Now, let's go ahead and after this creates, so it's, it's got zero documents in it. Uh, we can go back into our code here. Our bucket is going to be called uh, bucket, not bucket, sample. And uh, there's no password because that's a legacy thing uh, for, for, for Couchbase. Um, but actually what we do want to do is we want to authenticate with the cluster. So we can say cluster dot uh, authenticate. And we can say go cb dot password authenticator uh, username and password. Again, I didn't create one, so let's go back into our Couchbase dashboard. We'll go to um, security. Go ahead and add a user. We'll call it uh, sample. Give it a password, very simple password. And we'll say that this particular user will have uh, data roles, and the only role it has is data writer, because that's all we're doing is writing data. So we're going to save it. Uh, we don't need to memorize the password. But let's go back into our code here. And for the username, it's sample. And for the password, it's uh, not password. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I saved it. Uh, we have our uh, connection established to Couchbase. Uh, what we want to do now is we want to go back into our CB import function. And uh, we'll, we'll leave the print line in there for now. Uh, we've compressed it. So what we want to do is we want to say bucket.insert map document. The ID of the document is going to be uh, the ID value. Um, so that way, um, every, every formerly OID value is going to be our Couchbase document key. Um, we're going to typecast this as string. We're going to be inserting map document as the actual data, and we're not going to have an expiration time. And we're not going to catch any kind of errors, but we're going to save it. Let's go ahead and try to run it. It failed on us. Um, so it looks like it probably failed on uh, the authenticate part.
So the error, and I didn't catch this ahead of time, but the error was that I had the port in here. Now I'm not using any kind of non-standard ports or anything, but uh, if you're not using a, a non-standard port, go ahead and remove the port um, and it should work after that. So we'll save it. Oops. So we'll save it. Uh, what we'll do is we'll go to rerun it again. Uh, and you can see that it started the application. It was pretty fast. Um, it, it printed out because we left the print still in there. Um, but after that, um, it completed. And we can validate that it's complete by going to the Couchbase dashboard. Uh, we can click on Documents. Uh, let's go ahead and, and click on one of these documents here. Uh, you'll notice that the information is there. So, I mean, I left, and this is on purpose, I actually left the ID inside of the document itself. You never know if you might need it in there. Um, but the ID does match the actual document key inside the database. Um, but everything everything checks out. Um, nothing nothing is out of the ordinary, and we've got these documents that that are not necessarily flat. So let's just recap because I know we did a lot. It I mean we have 91 lines of code, so it's not too much. Um, but what we did was we started with the main function. Inside the main function, uh, what we did was we authenticated to the Couchbase cluster, which is somewhere on my network. Uh, we opened up a particular bucket that we created called sample. After that, we opened a file uh, called people.json, which was in our relative path to our binary, to our Go file. Uh, when the application is finished, we close it. Um, we, we read each line. Uh, so we, we plan to use a scanner, and we plan to split the file up by lines. We create a new data channel, something that each one of our Go routines can access, uh, which is what we store all of our data in. Well, we spin up our Go routine. So in this case, we're creating 10 of them. Uh, we're saying we're adding a wait group. So we're saying, you know what, wait until all of our Go routines have finished before we exit the application. Uh, we, we create this Go worker. Uh, when it comes to scanning our file, we read in uh, line by line, and we add the text of that line to the data, which is a string. Uh, when, when our application, when our scanner is done, uh, we close our channel, uh, and we just wait until our Go routines have finished reading from that channel. Uh, when, we're, when we're finished, we can say application is complete. Now inside of the CB import, well, inside of our worker, uh, we say that we're done when the, when the worker is done, when it, when it reaches the end of file or, or there's an error of some sort. We read each, each piece of the channel and we import it uh, using CB import, which is a function we created. That function, we convert the string into a map of interfaces. Uh, we do a manipulation by adding a type and we call our compress, which is just a recursive function that takes our OID objects and turns them into strings. Uh, and there's three different types of things that you can encounter in a document. You can encounter a string, you can encounter an interface, so an, uh, an object, or you can encounter an, an array, which could have anything inside of it. When it's all done, when we have, when we have our flat string values, uh, what we're doing is we're saying we want to insert it into Couchbase. Uh, this, this can actually handle quite a bit. Uh, Go is very fast. Using, using our Go routines, we can do all of this in parallel. Um, so if you have massive amounts of data that you need moved into Couchbase from Mongo, which is a similarly formatted database, uh, this is definitely a very valid solution, and it, and it should very easily get you on your way.